hello gentlemen and ladies welcome back to another reaction video today i'll be reacting to the difference between uk england and britain i mean just saying that makes me confused um my last two videos i was watching about the british empire and the countries that the that england or britain or whatever were able to conquer so that's really confused me so i was really looking forward to watching this video and um someone actually um suggested this video to me um for me to watch and it's it's so it just so happens that it aligns with how i planned to watch it so um shout out to that person that recommended this video to me and you guys can also any video suggestion that you have you can also suggest it down in the comments below even if i don't watch it immediately i'll probably watch it eventually i write everything down i write all the um videos that you guys suggest down even if i don't watch it this year i can also watch it next year i'm trying to go on a um, a correct pattern the way i want it to be but i'll eventually watch it if it matches with the video that comes with, if it matches with the video that comes before it um before i continue guys you know what to do do me a favor and subscribe to the channel join me on this journey of world exploration as i continue to learn about the world i hope you guys join me and also enjoy my reactions as i go through this world exploration now let's get into the video the kingdom and a whole lot more explained by me cgp gray the United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms in <laughs> Who knows the answers to these I'm questions? I'm sure you guys were laughing at me in the last right videos. Now. For the lost, this is the world, this is the year. Guys, you know the funny thing? I actually thought, okay, I, I know England is one country. I'm not stupid, I know that. But I actually thought Britain and UK were the same. I hope that doesn't make me sound stupid as well, but I know England is, is, is a country. I know that one. That is for sure. But I thought England was part of UK stroke Britain. You know, that Britain and UK were the same. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the difference is really. In continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of mm -hmm. countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And, often forgotten even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard the English as slave-driving colonial <laughs> masters, no matter that all three have their own devolved parliament. That not <laughs> are allowed to vote on English laws despite the reverse not being true, and the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So where's Great Britain hiding? Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. Unlike England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly but not completely true as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain, such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Anglesey, the Scottish Hebrides, the Shetland Islands, the Auckland Islands, and the Islands of the Clyde. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country, like Great Britain is a geographical, not political term. The island of Ireland contains on it two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, they are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the Mid-Atlantic rather than 50 <laughs> kilometers off the coast of France. But that's a story for another time. To review, the two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland has on it two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, form the United Kingdom. There okay. are still many on the okay, okay, I can get it now. So, um, the British Isles, that's why, so that means all those um, islands, all those islands there are the British Isles. Okay, I get that. So, um, the Republic of Ireland, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, 
and Great Britain, Scotland, Wales, England, okay, the British House. Now, United Kingdom, that is the UK, is uh, consists of Northern Ireland, the Great Britain, Scotland, Wales, England. So now, the, okay, what am I having to say? Okay, great. Great Britain, okay, Great Britain consists of Scotland, Wales, England, okay? Okay, that means in that map, the countries that just, that is Wales here, um, Scotland here, England here, okay, that is the Great Britain. Now, to make it the United Kingdom, which is the UK, you now have that Great Britain plus Northern Ireland, okay? Then, um, Okay, so that means Republic of Ireland is not part of any of the UK or Great Britain. So it's, it's a separate country on its own. It's just part of the British Isles. Okay, I can guess that. I, um, I guess it's now. That's really confusing, man. Questions such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this we need to talk about empire. You can't have gone to school in the English speaking world without having learned that the British Empire once spanned a fourth of the world's land and governed nearly a fourth of the world's people. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. These want to be nations struck a deal with the empire, where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of state in exchange for a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According <laughs> to British tradition, all power is vested in God and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time. Oh. <laughs> that is really funny. <laughs> I'm not sure God God wants God is interested in all this discussion that you guys are having. <laughs> into a legal corporation sole, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy, with the reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth realm. They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis and Tuvalu. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three further entities that belong to the crown, and these are the crown dependencies, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they are not considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local hmm. assemblies. Are we done now? Really? Almost, but not quite. There are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Ecuatoria and Decalia, wow. Anguilla, St. Helena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan da Cunha, Montserrat, the British Indian Ocean Territory, the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pickern Islands. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the Crown which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the Crown in the British Isles are the Crown Dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the Crown are the Commonwealth realm, and the non-independent remnants wow. of the former empire are the British Overseas Territories. Thank you very the much British for watching. Man. Damn. The British man. So impressive. <laughs> Seriously. Guys, even to this point, the British are still contra controlling a lot of um, territories. It's crazy, man. I mean, like... I don't know how... I don't know, maybe you guys may be looking at me like I'm ass licking the British right now, but I am not. You have to picture this. This is a very small country, guys. It's a very small country with not really like a large population per se. Well, of course, they're not scarce in population, but they're not that large 
you know being able to exert this much power i'm always very impressed the same way i was impressed about germany in the world wars it's the same way i'm impressed with the british because you know, whether i like it or not no matter how the methods that these countries may have used this is some really impressive stuff that is just the fact of the matter it's really impressive anyway guys I hope you enjoyed the reaction. I really, really enjoyed this and I was confused. I know you guys saw at some point I was just talking some gibberish, but I, I was able to understand it eventually. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.